Hey everybody, what's up? This is Mike from Safe Drummer Magazine, and I have David from Mascara with me. And um, the first question I have is, uh, how's the tour going so far? Okay, so hello everyone, thanks for having me, Mike. Um, so far, the tour has been amazing. Uh, it's my first time in the U.S., and almost every show has been incredible. It's lovely people all around here, and so I really enjoy it. What's, what's been your favorite place to play so far? Uh, I can't really tell. I mean... One definitely one dream come true was playing in New York, a sold out show. That was that was really intense. But we had like almost every show was incredible. Nice. Because, Good turnouts yeah. all around across the board. Like yes. across and also like really incredible people. Very welcoming and yeah. So tell me, uh, like what have you gotten any uh, new endorsements lately? Like uh, what all endorsements do you have? Like uh, what gear have you been using on the so tour? For this tour, we uh, got hooked up from Tama with a nice birch walnut kit. Ooh. And uh, we all, so all of the four bands use that kit because, it, you know, it's the easiest way to work around. Good backline, and, convenient. Yeah. And uh, for drum heads, we use rainbow heads. And for cymbals, obviously, everybody has his own. I have my Moradero cymbals. And... Uh, Pedals, I play my ACT Darwin pedals, and for sticks, I use my Fish Sticks 2B Annihilator. And nice. for the triggers, I use my on triggers. Now, about the Fish Sticks, I'm also endorsed by Paul Libby. Like, yeah. what do you think about the Fish Sticks so far? I like? think so far, they're the best fitting sticks for me. You know, I prefer very heavy and long sticks, and it's kind of the perfect fit for me. Do you use the nylon or the, yeah, uh, the nylon tips? Nylon. Ooh, nice. Add some extra, you know brilliance on the right symbol yeah. sweet yeah i love them as well i like that grip like yeah. the way that that coating yeah, yeah. it's perfect like that they're my favorite sticks i've used yeah. yep. and and I, I use the wood acorn tips and those yeah. things don't break like yeah. they're amazing yeah <laughs> i didn't break a single stick so far really yeah i only like now it's like two nylon tips that i cracked but that was my fault because i hit the wing out and not the symbol well uh, but other than that i didn't break a stick so far that's awesome they're pretty solid yeah so tell me, uh, if you weren't a drummer, what would you have done for an alternative career? I mean, my alternative career is basically being a, a teacher, primary school or oh. elementary school, you would say, oh, that's in the awesome. US. And this is actually my first year where I only do music. So until now, I always was a teacher and did music as a hobby. And wow. now it's actually the other way around. A big step up. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm very proud of your accomplishments there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, let's see. Oh gosh, uh, what are some of the most complicated songs when you stepped into the band? What was like the most complicated material that you had to learn? The one that was like, oh my God, I got to play this song. This is I'm, I'm very lucky that we don't have to play that much of uh, the Delugium stuff because I wouldn't be able to play the stuff that Sebastian did. It's just the truth, the naked truth. I can't play five on top of seven or the other way around. Or I don't know. It's just crazy, 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 crazy dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's also, or that's just the way I feel about it. It's some music that is on Diluvium or on Acrasis is like meant to be on the record, not on a stage live, but just to th get the full listening experience with some good headphones at home in a you know safe space and not in a live situation because some of the stuff is just like so incredibly hard to play that it's very, very hard to put this on a stage. So do you play with the uh, in-ears to yes, a click and stuff? Of course, okay. of course. And I notice you guys don't, um, you know, um, as far as recording stuff goes, there's not amps tonight. So is everyone using, uh, are they using like going through a computer with like, a, oh gosh, what are the Kempers? Yeah, we use like Kempers now. Yeah. Okay. So all I of the guitars of, and bass is Kempers now. I noticed a lot of people have been doing that. It's a lot more convenient to just yes. bring a drum set on the road with a laptop and then plug in with the processor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Gosh. That's the main reason. That's going to be the, the future. Right? The future of touring is yeah. changing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Technology <laughs> is advanced, you know? Yeah. So out of all your shows and festivals and stuff that you have played, what's been like your... Your most favorite one where you're just in shock like maybe a like a bucket list band you opened up with or played with or something like that hmm. basically this whole tour is kind of a dream come true for me because like 10 or 15 years back when i was a little metalhead in my hometown we used to uh book shows and at one show we got flash god apocalypse when they were starting out and oh. where francesco was playing drums still and they only had their first EP out and I think Mafia maybe or oh yeah that's a even before yeah. Mafia so it was the early days and now we're on tour with them so that it's, is it's awesome. really amazing I'm really excited yeah. this is a good, <laughs> gonna be a good show tonight yeah it will 
you're gonna you're really gonna like the Phoenix scene. You know, they yeah. show up and they get wild out yeah, here. Perfect. You know, it's a good perfect. time. Well, like I said, okay. so far every crowd has been amazing. So, yeah. so, is there anything you'd like to say to aspiring musicians, your fans, your people out there right now? Yeah, one thing I would like to say is during this tour, because you know Christian Architable has a, a focal dystonia, it's called the thing where he, one of his fingers would just cramp during playing, and that Ooh. this comes from over practicing. Oh, and wow. during this tour. Because of Christian is with us, a lot of people stepped up to him and talked about that issue. And I also mm. know this is a kind of an issue for drummers. So for every young musician, don't over practice. Of yeah. course, practicing is important, but ah, call it day and quit sometime because I know. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen people get the burnout yeah, like that. Yeah, They're going yeah, and practicing yeah, every day, and I'm like, yeah. you guys aren't on for tour. For hours right and now? hours and hours, and they don't see progress, of course, and get <laughs> frustrated. And yeah. We're here for playing music. It should. What do you think fun. would be like the perfect <laughs> suggestion as far as like practice hours? How many days a week? Like every other day, so many hours. I think it really depends on the on the topic, or, or, or if you're practicing techniques or learning new songs, and it also depends on uh, how well rested you are or your brain, let's say, how good you can you know focus, and with all that in mind, for me personally, the the perfect amount of of really high focused practicing is like maybe 40 50 minutes and after them after that time i'm just like it won't get any better <laughs> so, so i would have to stop and get back like one or two days later yeah. you also have to let the, the, the things sit in and, and you know you've got to internalize all that stuff and True. so it takes time and it's Even always so. best to stay really hydrated yep. drink lots of water yep. I've seen people get cramped up and be like, oh, God. No, no. I'm like, you didn't drink enough water, man. Dehydrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very important tips. So what got you into drumming and how long have you been drumming? What got me into drumming? I, I don't really know. I mean, I've been into music all my life, I would say. And when I was six, I started with music school. And uh, after that, I did that for quite some time. And then I stopped and was more into other things and then when I was like 15 or 16 I got back into music and especially into metal and then drumming again and since then I would say I'm really like this is my thing awesome so for the past 15 years that's cool uh, gosh I'm trying to think oh I'm trying to think what else to ask right now hmm <laughs> I'm running out of questions of all uh <laughs> favorite song to play on stage yeah. right? oh, okay there we go What's your favorite song to play on stage? We'll edit that. Sorry, we'll let's try again. What's your favorite song to play on stage? <laughs> um, I would say When Stars Collide. So last song of the set. Okay, oh gosh. Um, how long did it take you to prepare to learn everything for this, uh, this tour? Um, set list and whatnot. So the set list is pretty similar to our last European tour. So it wasn't that hard. It was actually just two songs that I had to relearn because it was a long time ago when we recorded the album and um, so learning the material was not that much of an issue but still i like played the set every second day at least so nice. for like one month per uh, ahead of the tour so i spent some quite quite some time practicing <laughs> Do all you guys live near each other to practice, or did you have to do some of it over the internet? Members everywhere, Actually, like how does that we, work we, out? We never rehearsed for this tour. Our rehearsal was at seventy thousand tons of metal. Oh wow! Because Stefan lives in Germany, I live in Austria, Christian lives in Mexico, and our bass player Alex lives in the United States. Wow! <laughs> so there is no way to rehearse. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get the gig? Mm -hmm. How did you end up playing for Obscure? There we go. Yeah, how did you get the gig and how did you end up playing for Obscura? Okay, uh, that was before the pandemic started actually. There was one gig where Sebastian couldn't play and they reached out to me f to you know, do the fill-in job. But uh, that gig didn't happen, but Stefan already had my, my contact data. And when Sebastian decided to leave the band, he Stefan just reached out to me and we had a phone call and discussed things and that's what happened. That's awesome. Okay, anything that you want to say? I'm going to wrap it up because, uh, you know, it's about time. But is there anything you want to say in uh, closing? You know, any... Um, thanks to the drumming community or metal community, music community in general, it's a very welcoming scene. We should keep that. 
don't fight each other about stupid things like just we're here to enjoy our time on this planet earth it's very limited so make the best out of it that is amazing i've been telling people that for a minute i'm like guys we need to pull together yes, and everyone exactly. needs to stop arguing yep. Yeah. Like we got, we're all in this together. Like I want to exactly. see everyone succeed. Yeah. Like I said the yeah. other day on yeah. my Facebook, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's that is amazing. This has been a really cool interview. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. <laughs> that was